Thank you so much. This is a huge crowd, and I'm so appreciative. And I just want to start by saying, and by the way, Joe, you're not out of this. Come on. So our COO, Joe Murgo, many of you know, has served 25 plus years, 28, I think, the actual number, with the county of Lexington. And so uh, some people say I stole them. Other people know that it took me years to close this deal. So anyway, um, Joe's going to chime in and help me out with this presentation. But I would be remiss if I didn't say thank you for raising me. I, um, my father was transferred here when I was two. Um, we first lived in Edenwood in Casey. We moved out to um, a street off Corley Mill Road when I was nine. And, um, and a lot of you know this story, but I still have to tell it. I begged my mom to let me ride the bus, and I begged her to let me stop being a teacher's kid, go into Lexington 5, and let me go where I lived in Lexington 1. So um, I did get to do that in fifth grade, but our um, dates didn't match up. So meaning we might have in Lexington 5, the week before Easter, and then the week after would be Lexington 1. Well, by the eighth grade, that was rectified and we had the same dates. So she said, I don't know why you want to go to Lexington 1. Lexington 5 is just fine. I've been teaching there all these years. How about just stay where you are? And I said, no, I want to be a Wildcat and I want to ride the bus. Like, who says that, right? <laughs> so I, uh, she said, well, then you better get yourself enrolled. So I literally jumped on the bus, got to Lexington Intermediate School, told them I was ready to enroll, and they said, you're a kid, you can't enroll yourself. And so she still had to come over after school and get me enrolled. But I stayed at Lexington Wildcat. I did cheer for Lexington. I might be the tallest cheerleader ever. Um, I'm not cute like Lindsay as a little cheerleader. But um, I was so proud to cheer for Lexington Wildcats. I got to cheer for the Raw Girls. I got to cheer for a, a national, um, excuse me, a state championship team. So all of that was great. I got to cheer with Daisy's daughters. Um, so there are a lot of cool um, connections in this uh, room, and I want to make sure that I thank everybody that I do know, and I appreciate, as I said, you guys raising me. Um, and funny enough, I wanted to finish high school in three years, so I had to go back to Irmo to get English four. And, and so even though I have a Wildcat diploma, I'm mixed up as a yellow jacket and a Wildcat, so I try to be nice to everybody in Lexington and Irmo Chains. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. Um, first of all, I will tell you, we are a woman-owned business. Um, we made, made it so in 2007. Recently, we did some changing around, and I have the largest ownership. But those of you that know, my husband would say he's pretty pushy, and I'm not real sure that I'm in charge on any given day because he's got a lot of pushing going on. Um, uh, we, we promised Lexington County when we, we um, made this negotiation in 2011 uh, that we would spend about $320 million, I think it was 317 to be exact, but we would invest that much money and we would hire folks and we gave a five and a 10 year plan. We passed those numbers a while back and we're gonna show you how and why we've done that. We started with 408,000 square feet and 185 employees. We were spending about $2 million a month trying to keep the lights on, the doors open, and people in training. And finally, in the fall of 2015, we received our um, approval from FDA, and we finally could market commercial product and start making a little money. And those were a lean 18 months, and I was so worried that we wouldn't be able to deliver on all our promises. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit more about economic development later, and we'll give a shout out to Sarah and her team. But I want to say that we did make it, and there was a lot of hard work. And for those who started with me early on, I said, I promise you we'll get to a bonus situation. Just hang on. And it took a couple years, but we got there. And here's, here's a, oh, before we get there, Please stand up, guys, with the Nephron Nitro group. So this is part of my newest part of the family. We started Nephron Nitro. I'll introduce Coke Man, Chuck Jenkins, and many of you, certainly the ones from Prisma Health, know my friend John Singerling. And together, they came up with this idea, Lou, what about Nephron Nitro gloves? And I was like, I'm really a little busy. I don't have time for that. But somehow we worked it in. And I'm looking over at Craig Hendricks, and I see that we had the, the seafood group has been helping us all along with electrical, fly ash, and all the things they're famous for, and we appreciate all of the help. You know, it took over 550 contractors to build the first phase of Nephron, and we continue to hire local contractors as much as we possibly can, keeping that money and that payroll right here in Lexington County. 
So let's play the video. Please, Connor. <laughs> Okay, so the reason we, that, it did have some honk, honk kind of music, but anyway, um, one of the guys at work took that really cool video to show us a nitro glove, and we're excited that we have been a part of both the last presidential administration and the current one, bringing supplies back to America, and we're doing it not just in America, but in South Carolina and Lexington County, right in West Columbia. So we have announced a Nephron nitro glove plant this past July, and that nitro glove plant, you can see as it's been being built, um, is a corner in 11,000 square feet. We're going to have 350 plus employees to get it off the ground. And again, investing in Lexington County and the Saxagop Industrial Park. I'm very excited about that. This was the announcement. Um, you know, I'm so shy, I'm never excited. And um, we made that announcement in the world's hottest tent this past July. <laughs> and Governor McMaster was so funny, for those of you that didn't attend, he goes, Lou, I knew you could make drugs, and I knew you were now gonna make drugs, but I didn't know you could make the world's largest oven. <laughs> I thought it was very funny. Anyway, you can see in phases, now that roof, uh, I think there's going to be one more picture, that roof is all but complete, um, not just the decking, but also the membrane roof, that's now down to the last fifth, and maybe we'll see a picture of that you can see. So once we get in the building, we're off to the races, because this isn't going to be an office complex, they're going to be 36, 400 feet long dipping lines with these crazy looking hands going round and round, dipping into nitro. And we have a, you know, a cool process, but they're 400 feet long, and we're gonna put grading on the second floor so that when you walk in, you can actually see all 36 lines, top to bottom. Oh yeah, one thing I'm very proud of is, I've seen quite a few op-eds that say, we don't have any cranes in Columbia, we're just not building. It's all cranes in the upstate and cranes in Charleston. Well, we have more than two cranes. We have two cranes and some uh, lulls and all kinds of things. So I'm here to say we have cranes, commerce right here in Columbia. So let's not just think that the other folks are passing us by. We're doing it right here. And I want to talk about that because I think when we talk about progress, we make more progress happen. And so I hope you'll join me in sharing the news that we do have to be cranes in Columbia. All right, we also are about to open up in three weeks a vaccine facility. And this is new for us. We've always had positive pressure clean rooms but never negative pressure clean rooms. So I'm excited to say we'll be able to make not only vaccines, but antibiotics and chemotherapeutic agents. So I thought, well, this is cutting edge technology. It's new for us. So I chose the colors for that vaccine wing are lime green, super bright yellow, and super crazy purple, worse than this. And I did that because I thought, this is kind of like growing up with the Jetsons and, pot and, and innovative and so forth. So, when you get a, come take a tour soon, you'll see purple, lime green, and bright yellow. It's crazy. But not a lot. Uh, oh. <laughs> okay. Clemson fans in the room, Joe. Check it out. Okay. Oh, by the way, everyone knows in this town that I um, have a nickname, Cockadoodaloo. But I want you to know that as of last week, I joined the first ever inaugural advisory council for Clemson, for you Clemson fans, I'm sharing the love. Um, and it's a good group. And I, what I, I, I applaud both South Carolina and Clemson is they're really focused on what do we as employers need to hire, what do we need, and how do we get there, and how do we train the students to come out ready to work, not just educated. And so I'm excited that both schools have added programs where they are really working with employers in the region, not just the state, in the region, Folks like IBM, Boeing, British Petroleum, and others, and, and Siemens, and so forth. So that's good for all of us because we need talent and we need workforce development. And that's an old term, but it, it's still relevant. Okay, is this the next video? Oh, okay. We also have doubled our distribution and secondary packaging. So what you see in this photo represents got to do math, that's always trouble. <laughs> okay, so Lexington One, thank you for raising me, but my math skills just never got as good as they should have been. 
I had to stick to the right brain English side. All right, so um, we'll have about 700,000 square feet under roof in this building in about three weeks once that next wing is CO'd. We have 400,000 square feet in the Nephron Nitro Glove Plant. We happily purchased, and it was financed by Mike Craps and um, First Community Bank, the um, Lexington County Spec Building, and Sarah helped us with that. And so that gives us soon a little, a little over a million four, a million five square feet in the Saxagot Industrial Park. And when I arrived there first, there was only an Amazon building and the then SCENG training facility. So a lot is happening in that industrial park. All right, and I think you're seeing pictures going through of our laser guided vehicles, for example, we're highly automated. Sometimes I even announce that we're really a tech company that by the way makes drugs. We're not necessarily just a pharmaceutical company because all of us in advanced manufacturing are just highly automated. And so one thing we're looking for, our higher education schools in Midlands Tech and OC Tech and the other good technical college schools is to help us create people who know how to operate PLC logic controlling, doing ladder logic and other things because everything we do in advanced manufacturing and the folks from Michelin will tell you the same, is highly automated. And I am thankful to Bryce Myers who I saw walk in earlier to Midlands Tech. Thank you, Bryce, thank you. Because we need these students to be trained, ready to go. And thank you for what you're doing and working with us on our apprentice programs and other things. Okay. Um, this is what we're putting in the county building. So many of you wonder, why do we buy that? Well, after these guys talked us into doing the nitro glove plant, we said, where are we going to put our new injection molding facility? So we are actually building an injection molding facility, again, with that idea of onshoring, reshoring things here in our state. We will be making our own syringes, rubber stoppers, plunger rods, and caps. And that's not just for nephron consumption. We'll be selling those hopefully around the United States and then finally globally. We're also going to move from the Midlands Tech Northeast campus our pocket nev assembly, and we want to automate that. We make a handheld cute little nebulizer uh, for taking the respiratory meds that we make, and that will be moved there. And then I'm really excited to say that Joe has helped us over the last few months since his arrival in developing a wellness um, facility. We already have an employee pharmacy to make it easy for folks to pick up their prescriptions and save money. Now we'll be adding a wellness facility for our own. Do you want to elaborate on that? So everybody understands where we are with, with health care, national health care, and, and trying to find new ways of recruiting and retaining employees. And so we also know that vibrant employees and, and folks who produce are ones who come to work every day and are there and don't have to take a ton of time to leave off, whether it's for their kids or for themselves. And doctor's appointments take a long time. So we have partnered with a third-party entity bringing our own doctor in-house um, through that third party. Our employees will be able to use that facility at no cost to them for ages two all the way through adulthood for those folks. They can make their appointments online and their time away from work will be probably no more than 30 minutes and it's right down the street. And so not only are we gonna lower our insurance costs, but we're gonna keep our premiums for our employees better and then reduce the amount of time that they have to take off. Thank you. And I think that... Now, my next plan, Sarah, so you know, is see the pad to the right? I want to completely double the size of this, and I want to get started hopefully in the next couple of months. So I'm excited that's the next expansion. And then we've been approached by quite a few large entities with a lot more money, because we have this much and they have that much. And they would like to be a part of what is going on in our industrial park so that they can hopefully secure things like syringes or gloves for their hospital systems and so forth. So we hope that we can um, entice, if you will, or close as I like to say, some other partners to help us continue to expand these very necessary um, components and products that we need in hospitals. Um, and, and they're always in shortage. And we don't have enough made here in America. And that was so highlighted during the very worst of the pandemic. And so we're looking for other things, not just the ones that I've enumerated here, but other things that we can bring to America, to the South Carolina, and particularly to Lexington County. I often say
say that sometimes I get asked to be on boards and committees around the Midlands because I represent, we need a female and we need somebody who likes the county. So I wear that with honor, you should all know. All right, and this is our 10 acre parking lot. The people at Colite helped me make a whole solar grid parking lot, which I'm quite proud of. It's part of our effort to be LEED certified and green. Spencer, why are you leaving? Pretty Oh, <laughs> so Spencer's part of our family too. And then another sneaky gentleman that I saw walk in in the back, the person that motivated me and founded the company, Stand Up Bill. Oh, he's <laughs> down. He almost never shows up with anything I'm doing. So I appreciate you, Bill. <laughs> We made a graphic for you, an infographic, Nephron by the numbers, and some of those things are uh, that have been popping up through the spring. But I want to let, I think, Joe, at this point, I want you to come and talk about economic development and what has happened from a hunting piece of property with some pecan trees to now. So go ahead. So uh, obviously, when, when, when Nephron first came to Lexington County, um, I was blessed to be a part of that county team that, that helped recruit them here. And a lot of it had to do with being a business friendly community. But it started back in 2006 when Lexington County Council had a vision to buy property. And it was something that was new back then. Economic development wasn't as strong as a booming name recognition or going and buying land, especially government buying land, wasn't something that was, you know, something well known here. A lot of the folks in Lexington County obviously don't like when we pass bond referendums and things like that. And Lexington County floated a $13 million bond in order to develop farmland. Um, at the time, in, in that area of Lexington County, when, when we were working on some of those areas, the amount of taxes that's play, paid on agricultural property amounts to basically nothing. So over a six year period, we were looking at collecting less than a total of $6,000 uh, for that property. Immediately since then, since Amazon's facility, Nephron's expansion, Nephron's additional expansion, Nephron's next expansion, and Nephron's next, next expansion that we'll be doing, um, the park has continued to grow. Most importantly, it's one of the only parks, other than ones in Lexington County, that because we did a countywide bond referendum, that we share the revenues across all five school districts, which is something that's never been done in South Carolina. So when we talk about no child left behind, I think Lexington County embodies that when we're trying to develop an educated workforce here. And so now you're looking at uh, bills here, so I won't tell you how much Nephron's paying in taxes annually, um, but I will tell you that, um, that, that, that we, pay, we pay well over uh, seven digits in, in property taxes here on an annual basis. So does Amazon, obviously Dominion's gas training facility, and then not to mention that all the new construction projects that Luz talked about here today, are not even on the tax roll books yet. And so, not only are we producing revenue, helping to invest into our school systems, but at the very same time, we've created almost 2,000 jobs here. Creating income for folks to be able to put back into every one of your small businesses here with their ancillary income that they can have. So creating quality <laughs> So when, when folks get upset about why do we incentivize companies to come to the state of South Carolina, you cannot bring companies to your state if you are not competitive against Tennessee, Alabama, Florida, and Georgia, and everybody else that we compete against across the country. And Specifically, North Carolina just lowered their taxes. Correct. So if we're not competitive here and we don't create a business-friendly environment, then you're not going to have everything else that these companies do for our community. And, and Lou's not going to brag on herself, but the other things that you don't see that you all well know is that they are huge benefactors of being able to give money back to the community. And those don't show up in here. And so you look at what these companies are doing, not just job creation and economic development and economic impact, but quality of life alone is also something that you can't you know, discount. And so why do we do economic development? This is a poster child for why economic development works in the state of South Carolina is because Nephron has come here and has continued to flourish and grow and give back and invest. And I think that's the biggest benefits of why we incentivize companies here is to look at what the investment has been. So Joe, thank you for saying that. 
I think one of my most um, just delightful moments is I got a call from Senator Dick Harpoolian, and he discussed economic development with me, and I was so nervous that my incentives were going to be called into question. Because he makes a lot of news about that. What he did say to me was that you've been transparent, you've made promises, you've delivered. I call you the poster child of economic development. I was like, Whew. I appreciated that so much. It was a real positive call, and I think if you ask me, he'd tell you the same. But when you mentioned philanthropy, I, I really have to take a moment to shout out for Joanne and Michelle. Um, there are so many things being done around our community. One that you'll remember because billboards were all over Lexington County when we had the thousand year flood. The one, I think one flood, one SC fund helped to victims of the flood tremendously. And Joanne and the team at Carolina Community Foundation handled that from start to finish and are still donating to victims through that fund, helping them get a leg off and, and make their way. So, there are a lot of opportunities across this room that we can all think about philanthropy. There's a great one right there, Carolina Community Foundation. I want to end really quickly by telling you what the Midland Business Leadership Group is working on. A set of initiatives, one of them um, that has developed out of the initiatives of this group is a coordinating council. And this is our effort, our idea, the brainchild, to try and do more and more each and every month that goes by about bringing the two sides of the river together. Growing up, it was a very serious divide between Lexington County and Richland County. What I have seen, especially since I've backed, is more and more opportunities for the two counties to work together. One of the ideas that came out of the Coordinating Council, which involves about 80 different entities, philanthropic entities, government entities, as well as um, businesses and other, other folks, is that we should support the Saluda Shoals Greenway project. That has been ongoing, and you're gonna see more and more development along the river from Saluda Shoals Park on into downtown Columbia. Um, there's also some pennies for pavement work that is helping to support that. That is ongoing, and it's just nothing but beautifying what I think is the gem of the Midlands area, the three rivers that come together in Columbia. I think, that if I live long enough, I will get to see riverfront development. And I push for that along with my colleagues on NBOG and my partner in um, the Livability Committee, Bill Boyd of Hanger Sinker Boyd. We are out there, what you don't know, pushing and pushing in Washington with DHEC and with others to try and be allowed to clean up the river, get the tar balls out. And then once we do, we've had the Ginyard family commit to allowing us to do beautiful park and development work between Blossom and Gervais. So it's inching closer every day. So stay tuned watching that. Another idea that came out of the um, MBLG efforts is we don't have Welcome to Columbia signs. We have national baseball champions. We have national basketball champions with the um, Gamecock women's basketball program. But we really don't have any beautiful Welcome to Columbia signs. You got Welcome to Rock Hill. Welcome to Lawrence. We got welcome to a lot of places, but not Columbia. So we felt like this was a nonpartisan project that we could all work on and do something great for the Midlands region. And so we've identified the first two. The first one would be the um, space between I-26 and the Columbia Metropolitan Airport. It always looks the same way it looks since I've been three years old. Or seven. We, we, we see now that one has been condemned, so we're on the way to that program. And um, we want to put sidewalks and beautiful landscaping. Um, we do have a landscape plan. We have raised all but a hundred or two hundred thousand. I think we're down to ninety thousand actually. So anybody that wants to donate, we want to get that gateway first, and get. And part of it would be giving a shout out to Doolittle Doolittle Raiders which that exit is named for, and our, it's part of our proud history. The second one is the exit going in to see our soldiers at Fort Jackson. Both plans are already together. We have raised $1.3 or $4 million already with private donations from companies. Um, Lexington County supported. Some of the other municipalities have supported either in-kind maintenance donations or with uh, money. We are still looking to raise about $90,000. You can thank your friends at Truist at Bank of America. You can thank your friends at uh, 
Blanchard Machinery, your friends at Nephron, uh, Colonial Life, and others who have supported that work. And we are looking for that last little spread. So anybody that wants to be a part of it, either give a dollar or bring a shovel and you can help be a part of getting these beautiful signs and landscape into place. And we identified what, seven or eight? Ten. Ten. Oh, ten gateways. So coming in on I-126, where, you know, we just have a lot of grown-up foliage and it's not a lot of beauty. And our city is so beautiful and the region is so beautiful. And I feel like this is an excellent way to celebrate that. Now, I've talked too long, but if Angel lets me, I'll happy to take one or two questions. Okay? Anybody? So we are hiring, okay? We are hiring. We oh, I didn't even tell you this. If you go into a store and buy a Abbott in-home test kit, the reagent, the drops that you put on the little piece of paper, is being made by us. So we're producing 30 million um, doses a month, ramping to 50 million doses. So if you buy one of those in-home test kits and you see a little white bottle that says squeeze two drops, we're filling that right in West Columbia. So really proud of that. And recently we um, got to be a part of Access Bio's kit. They have, they're from South Korea, but their US headquarters is New Jersey, and we'll be helping to assemble those kits. So I'm looking for part-time work, somebody that wants to work four hours, six hours a week. We're gonna start the kitting process in the county building while we're finishing up our architectural needs. We need folks, if you just wanna work a Saturday afternoon, we need you, and it's great pay, and the working conditions are great, and we want to be able, I don't know why I committed to it, but we have, we've got to ramp up to kidding. 50 million for Abbott and 60 million a month for Access Bio. So you see the numbers, lots of millions of kids. And they'll be coming right out of here in South Carolina. And that's something we're quite proud of. So that's another need. So we're hiring. Any questions, anybody? Bill, you don't have anything you want to correct me on? Anything? <laughs> Thank you for all the rest. <laughs>